said, we, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before the foundation, for God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Enjoy the journey. All right. It's in you. Enjoy the journey. Kind Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for yet this opportunity to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And we understand God is not by might, but is by your you. We ask that you remove it. Let your word have free course. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And Amen. It's in you. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. All of us who have accepted and know God, God has equipped us for the journey that we call life. God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. And God uses people like you and like me who have families, who have responsibility who have bills, and who are, have busy lives for his glory. And a lot of time we minimize what God has placed in us because we look at what's happening around us versus, was it, versus examining what God has placed in us. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, not for bad work, but for good work. God has prepared beforehand, he has placed in us, he has prepared us to do good work for his kingdom. And we have to be willing, we have to be willing to accept and do the things that God has placed and assigned for us to do. Why is it that we run from God when we ought to be running to God? Why is it that we try to figure out or try to find reason not to be obedient to the will of God and the way of God and God's word and yet, do what we won't do. We, when we accept what God has prepared for us, when we accept the new ideas of learning the truth and learning new truths about who God is, it will forever change who you are. It will ever, forever change your thinking. It will, will ever change our mind. It will ever change our understanding. Once you have been stretched by the power of of God, you are changed forever. Once you have been stretched by knowledge, understanding, and information, you will be changed forever. Once you have been stretched, once you have been uh, uh, changed, you will be changed forever. Well, what you're saying, that's why we send our children to school. One of the reasons for school is to stretch them, to change their thinking to illuminate their understanding, to expose them. So when they go to the first grade, they're not the same as before they went to the first grade. Because they, they gain some the information, they gain some knowledge, they gain some understanding that will help them for the second grade and for the third grade. But for some reason, if they don't do what they're supposed to do, they get held back. I hope I had a witness in here. Information, knowledge is supposed to help us grow. It's supposed to help us as we process through this thing called life. And we have to understand what God placed in us. He placed special things in each and every one of us. God has given us ability, each and every one of us, ability to do something great. But we can't minimize it. We can't compare it with the person sitting beside us or the person who's sitting in front of us. We allow people behind us or in front of us to keep us from exercising, keep us from fulfilling what God has placed in us. Uh, uh, God has placed some stuff in, in each and every one of us that everybody can't do. And when we got to grab hold of that, we have to recognize that everybody can't do it. And sometimes we think because we're able to do it that everybody else can do it. But that's not the case. That's not the case we have to understand and we have to know that God has given us and, and he will shape us and he will mold us and when he shape you and mold you your life is never the same again that's why the Bible says if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things have passed away and behold all things become as new we have to understand that we have potential 
the potential that God has given us to allow us to live a life that's productive, that's great for the cause of Christ. God has given us and have uh, empowered us to live a life that will impact not only ourselves, but the people that are around us. We can have an impact on the lives of people around us. And we want our impact to be of good and not of evil. You see, you can impact people's lives evil, by evil ways, or you can act, impact people's lives by doing what is good. You can impact people to have them have a, to have a positive outcome in their life. God prepares, the Bible said, in advance. Look to the person sitting beside you. It's in you. We look for the word and we look at the word prepare. And prepare meaning to have you uh, equipped and trained and ready to accomplish what it is that you have to accomplish. When you, when, 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 when you, when you look at the various things in the world, when it comes to sports or whatever the case, or academics or spelling bees or whatever the case may be, the, the person will sit and prepare themselves. Before they go and take the platform, they have been, spent time being prepared. So when they give them the word to spell that I can't spell, hello, somebody, uh, <laughs> you say, how in the world that nine year old, 10 year old know how to spell that word? Amalgamation. But they've been prepared. They've been prepared to, 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 to stand up with confidence. In the night and this evening, many, you're gonna sit, and the team's been, they've been prepared for the day, and that's why they call it the Super Bowl. They've been prepared for this day. So to, to determine who's been prepared the best. Who will show up on this day, ready to do what they need to do on this day. Now, now we have to understand it's preparation and God will prepare us. God will make sure that we have what we need. That's why first Peter two and nine said, you are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. His own special people. We, we are a chosen generation. We are royal priesthood. We God's only special people, his own special people that we may proclaim. The goodness about Jesus, that we can proclaim his praises, that we can give him glory, that we can give him honor, that we can give him everything that's in us. What sense does it make to serve a God that you don't praise? I remember when I was young, like some of these teenagers, oh, I can't wait to get 18. I can't wait to get 19. I can't wait to, I can't wait to, I can't wait to get 20. I'm ready to get out my mom and them house and this and that. I'm ready to do this and that. When 18, 20 and all that came, you realize responsibility. Now I got to take care of me. Huh? Now I got to find some place to lay my head. Huh? I, so now I got to do everything mom and daddy. I got to do now for me. And if I don't do the right things as I take this journey, it's going to be a struggle. If, if I didn't listen and grab hold of what they were teaching me in the process, it's going to be tough. I want to be grown. But let me help you young people. After you start getting older, once you get a certain age, time speed up. When you get older, it seems like the years go by faster. Now, that just might be me, I believe. <laughs> when you get older, when you start crossing 40 and 50 and, and 60, it seems like, man, yeah, it, it, it's already 2015. It seems like we were just talking about Y2K. Time is speeding up. When you're young, it seems like everything going so slow. How are you? I'm still seven. I can't wait to be eight. I'm still, uh, uh, wow, man, it seemed like this year is taking so long. I'm ready. I'm, how long are you 12? I just can't wait to turn 13. I want to be a teenager. And it seemed like that 12 year took, that 12 year took forever. I hope I had a witness in here. And once you, once you get, once you get up in age and time, you say, man, time ain't waiting on nobody. Matter of fact, time is speeding up and I got to take advantage of the time and I've got to understand and tap into the potential. That God has placed and enjoy the journey that he's given and discover and understand he, he, he has designed each and every one of us to do great and wonderful things. We just have to open it up. And I'm going to close on this. Lazy people, they sit in the house all day and do nothing. And when you get home, lazy people say, what are we eating? Huh? 
Lay, lay, lay the people, lay the people. You come in the house, you don't work hard. Lay the people, sit there. The remote control sitting right in front of them. Say, hey, can you hand me that remote control? And all they have to do is get up and reach. Lazy people will cause you to change your priorities if you're not careful. Lazy people will cause you to plan, will plan your schedule. Because lazy people know when you do it, when you, how you do it, and how, well, I know you don't work. I see, because you're not, you know, they're not assess you. They know what time you go to work. They know what time you get off. They probably know how much money you make. They probably know when you go on vacation. And they'll tell you, well, you, can you take me? To, no, I can't do it. Well, you off, ain't you? Well, I know you work from this to this to this to this. Well, you mean to tell me you sat here all day? Waiting for me? And all, I ain't the only cousin you got. But you know I'm the only cousin going to put up with you. And instead of us treating those people that, that put up with us with respect and they, we take advantage of them. Hello, somebody. And we don't enjoy the journey. Look to the person who says, it's in you. Enjoy the journey. Let us stand to our feet.